keep on implying that my decision to have the surgery is about anything but helping this baby. I'm not implying. I'm just asking. I don't believe you. Why? Why would I not say it out loud? For months, we've been talking about getting Megan to this special school, and now you suddenly can't make the interview? And what about, uh, what about Vanessa's baby? That's the question on the table. Are we talking about that? Damn it, of course we are. I'm just trying to do what's right for the babies, for Vanessa's baby, for Just our... answer me one question, please. Has Roger the least little bit tried to convince you not to move away with me and Meg? Come on, Holly, it's a simple question. <clears throat> May I join in, or is this a private affair? You'll have to excuse the two of us. <clears throat> Don't mind Fletcher. He's always seeing shadows where there aren't any. I see. So, uh, what brings you by? Oh, I came by to send over some papers to Philip. Every one of them related to the Spalding Foundation. Oh, right. Yes, you see, Roger, while you were here with Holly and Fletcher, I was planning our move. Oh? In less than a week, you and I are expected at the Spalding offices in Los Angeles. So I took the liberty of leasing a lovely uh, house in Malibu on the beach, a great cottage in Benedict Canyon, and two rather expensive cars, all courtesy of Spalding, of course. Uh, sounds great. It should. With Alan falling apart as a result of the Annie debacle, you and I are now ensconced in the most lucrative division of the company. I realize that, Amanda. Good, then you must also realize that after all these years, Roger, you are finally going to get everything you've ever wanted. You'll be king of the hill, darling. Unless, of course, you're willing to throw it all away on an old dream called Holly. A little girl in there just struggling to stay alive. You think I don't know that? I care about Vanessa and Matt and that baby just as much as you do. Then why aren't you acting like it? Because I don't buy that your decision is all about that baby. The recovery from the surgery will take a while, and if we don't leave, then Meg misses the deadline from the enrollment for the school in Toronto, and then there's no reason for us to go away. You think my decision is about staying in Springfield? I don't think you see it that way for yourself, but yeah, I think that has something to do with it. Mostly, I think it has something to do with Roger. Oh, for goodness sake, he was just hanging around. Oh, come on, Holly. Are you paying attention at all? Roger just happens to be around whenever you are. I mean, I can't count the number of times I have come in on you and Roger in these little intimate conversations. Honey, all you are seeing is the tail end of yet another argument. I think he's impossible. No, you don't. Your feelings for Roger have changed since we got married. You are imagining things. Oh, am I really? Yes. Holly, when we got married, all you wanted to do was to wipe Roger Thorpe out of your memory. You never wanted to lay eyes on him again. Well, I wasn't as sure of myself then as I am now. I can handle him now. No, you can't, because can. it's more than that. No, I have been seeing this coming Isn't... for quite a while now. And you know what I think this is? I think it is a situation, a very uncomfortable kind of situation, the kind where you are afraid to even face it. You're afraid to give credence to your fears because you think if you do, you're going to be the first one to give in. Give in to what? That's one of the reasons why I want us all to move to Canada. At least I am honest about my ulterior motives. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All this time you've been saying this is about Meg. Meg comes first. Meg will be so much better off at this school. All of that is still true. You just told me you are using our daughter to try and get me away from Roger. Well, I won't be a liar and say I'd be sad to see the last of Roger. Talk about deception. My God, you've been accusing me of everything under the sun, and all the time you're lying to me. Well, you can rant and rave all you want, but I will not be manipulated. I'm not trying to. Not by Roger Thorpe, and certainly not by my husband. Bad housekeeping sure comes in handy. But Jessica, you've already had two cookies. Oh. Jessica has, has asked for another cookie. She is such a pig, but it's okay because she is so thin, she's practically invisible. <laughs> I'll get it. No, honey, I can get it. It's okay. No, you rest. I can handle this. Shh. 
just the girl I was looking for. Really? Why? Can I come in? What? What's going on? <laughs> going on? <laughs> well, this isn't exactly a social visit, is it? No, it isn't. Abigail's certainly free to do as she wishes, but I have to say that I think her impulse to accept my plea offer is certainly the right one. Well, nobody's asking for your comments, Ben. It's just the facts, Ross. Well, the fact is I'm going to ask for and will probably receive a change of venue. Well, unless you're planning to put together a jury pool in Goshen, I hardly think a change of venue is going to matter. And this young lady is going to be looking at the better part of her life behind a prison wall. But then that's a gamble you're willing to take, isn't it? If you'd stop making this person Now, stop of course, if you're evidence. willing to go for an intelligent legal move. I am not looking for anything for you. might you. change the plea to self-defense. Abby saw Roy make a move toward the guard's gun, so she got there no, before he No, 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 no. Abby saw Roy do something else. But you have the videotape that would prove that. Now, on what tape is that? You underestimate me, Ben, and that's going to be your downfall. <laughs> no, you underestimate me, Ross. You've been trying to sweep me under a rug for many years, but those days are long gone. I don't think there's any game that you can beat me in now. I've worked with the best, Ben, and you don't even come close. So are you ready for brother versus brother round two? There is nothing I would like more. But that would certainly be a mistake, because this is not about us. Abigail, you've given this some thought, and this is what you want? Yes, Ross, it is. You agree with your wife? Yes, I do, Ross. In the best interests of my client and her husband, we accept the plea bargain of manslaughter. Really? Really. It's over, Ben. It's over. So let me clarify this. You are accepting my plea offer on behalf of Abigail Bloom. You heard me. So game's over. I win. What do you mean you win? What's the matter with you? This is life. It is not We've a game. We've accepted the plea bargain, Ben. There's nothing for us to talk about. Now you can leave with or without assistance. Abigail, are you really willing to go to prison without a fight? I'm not going to say it again. Don't tax yourself, big boy. Okay, Ross, what, what is the real plan? The real plan? Oh, yes, I presume you said all that stuff about the plea bargain just to throw him off. No, Blake, I think Ross did it because he knows it's the right thing to do. Thank you, Ross. Excuse me, I'm going to go start the paperwork for the plea bargain, all right? Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Huh? Drew, Drew is a nice girl. Drew, Drew, yes, yes, she's a very nice girl. She is, and, and you know what? We had a lot of fun, but Michelle, man, Michelle's... I get tongue-tied even talking about her. The question is what you're going to do. I swore to myself I'd give up looking for her. Yeah. That's it. And I saw her at the hospital with that guy. I was like, forget about it. I let her go. Now you're having second thoughts. If I found out where this came from, I'd probably find Michelle. Let's check out the initials. Maybe we'll find the school. Yeah? You know what? I'm going to call the library, see if they can help me out, dig up some information on it. What do you think? I 